true that he has dual citizenship. But what you're not being told is that he resides in this country. So where do they where does the state start? They start by telling you that he has been wanted from the 20, 24th day of February 2012 <coughs> until now. You're not 10 years down the line, 10 years. What you're not being told about those 10 years is that the state has done nothing until today. So the state comes up with an excuse and tells you what you want that he has been traveling and detected. Let us start with that one first, Yana. How is that the accused person, I mean the respondent's problem? That they did not detect him. The state needs to tell you, did he avoid? Did he do anything about it? It was it intentional? And then, with that, there must be some evidence. Let us look at the merits of that application. Basically, what you have been, what you have been told right now is, Yana, is about the law of Rwanda. You are being told that the respondent was indicted, and then after that, he was convicted and uh, sentenced for five years. Apart from what is written in the Red Notice, Yona, do you have those proceedings to date so that you can see it is true? What shows you that he was ever tried in absentia and what shows you that he was convicted? Now, what the state wants you to do is to assume, yet this is a court of law. How do we assume? That brings us to the next stage. And one thing that we need to all know is that when you want to extradite somebody, the offense in that country that is requesting must also exist in our country. It must be. So that in case it's not a crime in this country, how do you extradite a person to that country? So you have been told that the offense he was charged with was selling, selling and pledging. Today, let us look at our criminal procedure code, please, Your Honor. Where is selling and pledging part of a criminal activity in this country? If it does not exist in our penal code, and therefore to hold him for extradition shall not be the right thing to do. In any case, what is selling and what is pledging? That offense must be in the list of offenses that you extradite for. That one is always attached in. The this is a businessman. Article 28 is clear that we must maintain the dignity of a person. We have brought him to court today, awaiting for documents that might or might never come. There is no guarantee. So that they can face justice in the land of their mother. And at two, the same government of this country 
in paragraph in paragraph of shape for me to be a Kenyan. When we are saying Kenya has a porous border and the respondent deposing his passport in court is not a guarantee. This is Kenya admitting to the whole world. This is a matter going on CNN, the whole world, that our borders are porous. A serious question. How do we expect tourists to come to this country? How do we expect our rating worldwide? Just an admission like this. Then I take the court to take judicial notice of the Kenya power and the electric, electricity outage. When the Kenya government said that those people should be charged with the offense of treason. Really such statements? The terrorists have entered Kenya power? You know, all these statements are made to hoodwink the court to lock this guy. In. But they are not in the public interest and they're destroying our only country. The borders of Kenya are intact. Mr. Ndumu has traveled with his passport being locked in this court. He comes, asks for the passport. He travels out. He comes back. No anywhere evidence has been produced that he tried to use a porous.